Okay, so our third video in the series on learning processing in Python by building tic-tac-toe. So we've dealt with uh, some variables, we've dealt with some if statements, and uh, at this point my game board is being drawn with nine variables up here at the top, which if I can if I change one, so bottom middle has been changed to a 1, 1 is supposed to be an X, I see an X in the bottom middle position. And I change that to, maybe I play center O, and I see that O appear there. These variables are, key, are managing the state of the game board. Game board is comprised of nine different squares, we have nine different variables, and they're all storing a value of zero to begin with and at some point user is going to click on a square that's what we're going to deal with in this video they're going to click on a square like they clicked on the middle square and uh, at that point uh, we would change this variable middle middle to um, a one say because it was X's turn and a moment later you know, we would see this X appear on the screen because, of course, this draw loop is running at uh, whatever the frame rate processing is running at, so say 60 frames per second. So how do we do this? What do we, how do we find it if someone's clicked in this square? So there, there could be a few different ways to do it. It has to do with using the mouse. If we look in the reference manual, there's quite a few things here relating to how to deal with the mouse. And I strongly recommend that we go with this mouse pressed with the brackets. There's mouse pressed with brackets and mouse pressed without brackets. And uh, let's just talk about that. We already actually looked at mouse pressed because in the first video when we were starting to draw the screen, I mentioned that one way to help with drawing is to be able to find out where the coordinates are of where you are on the screen. So for instance, if I wanted to place some kind of uh, text instructions here, or I want to draw, or keep score or something, let's say this position right here is supposed to be something, I click there, and because I have a mouse pressed function here, when processing detects a click, uh, it goes and runs the mouse pressed function, and all this function says is to print these two variables uh, x, mouse x, and mouse y. And those variables, store processing is taking care of this for us. They contain the coordinates of where the mouse is, you know, at the moment that that mouse press, that mouse press clicked occurred. You'll notice I kind of clicked kind of in between here around this line. This line is 200, we know that, so your Y variable is 200. And somewhere between 600 and the edge of the screen, which is 800, so that came out 700. So that, you know, we can kind of see that, that would have been the correct uh, place for that click. Why did I put extra brackets around mouse X and mouse Y? you got to watch that. If you get one of these... Uh, error messages. It's saying that print line only accepts one thing. Let's look in the manual. Print line says it writes uh, information to the console area. That's the area down here. This is this is an error that's coming out here. That's not what I wrote, but that's the errors also come out there. And it accepts what? <laughs> it accepts a what? which is the data to print to the console and we just it's just a single what that you can print um, so you could print a variable that has a value but look what they've done here they have printed several things at once they called that list of stuff that's how we can get several things to be printed out so I put parenthesis on there but we'll just follow the example of the documentation and I'll put those are square brackets and I'll click because that's when we got the error. Looks no problem. Looks good. Okay, so just watch out for that. If you're doing some printing to the screen, which you might do at this point, then you might uh, then you might encounter that error. 
So we need to know where they clicked. Like, and the thing is, the user's never going to click exactly in the same spot. If the user's going to click the top left corner, let's just stick with top left because that's a really easy one to start with. You know, sometimes they're going to click somewhere in the middle. Sometimes they're going to click off to the side a little bit. The real question is whether they clicked somewhere between this line here and you know obviously the edge of the screen because they hopefully they didn't click off here somewhere but that would be the indication that they've clicked somewhere in this column actually if they clicked between here and here that means mouse X would be between whatever it is here of course which that's zero remember this is the origin so that's zero and I made those rectangles 200 wide you'll remember so this value is 200 so X has to be between 0 and 200 if they clicked somewhere in this column. And similarly, if they clicked in this box, Y, well, that would have to be between 0, because again, origin is in the top left, 0 and 200. So what we really want to know is, did they at the same time click you know, between here and here and, and in terms of X? and here and here in terms of y. So let's write an if statement to make that work. You know, and you might be saying, oh, this is, there's better ways to do this. <laughs> and there are. It's, mass x has to be greater than zero. And it has to be less than, at the same time, it has to be less than 200. Let's just see if we can make this work. We'll talk about in another, we'll talk about different ways of doing these things. But this, I think, is the most instructive way at this point when we're kind of learning how to do some coding. So now this mouse press is just sitting here waiting for someone to, you know, to click. And you actually, if I can just also say this, one click here, oops, mouse Y didn't do what I was, thought it was going to do. We have one click here. Okay, so it did pick up that click, and it printed test. You'll notice it printed test here. And why did it do that? Well, the mouse x variable was 126. This would have been true, because it was greater than zero. And at the same time, this would have been true, because it was less than 200. And this, what is this? This is a operator you know, just like a greater than and less than or other uh, operators. And it's called AND. It's a Boolean operator. And so it deals with trues and falses. That's what Booleans mean. If statements are always reduced down to trues and falses, to Booleans. In other words, when we look at mouse x greater than zero, we think of that as either being true or false. That's kind of what we should think about when we look at these conditions. And so I'm just going to put a comment over here. And I'm just going to say that that was true. And this one, of course, well, that one was also true. We just talked about that. But what does it mean when we stick and in the middle? Well, we have a, now this is a condition as well. So this overall condition is asking the question of whether or not, you know, we always have to ask ourselves in the end, is a condition true or false. So is the overall condition here true or false? Well, what does and do? We don't even, I haven't even said yet. And Boolean and, I wonder if this is in the reference manual, I hope it is, uh, takes two Booleans and it gives you a true only when they're both true. All right, so if we have, if we didn't click, we'll see that in a moment. We'll test that in a moment. Let's just see if it's in here. It's a different and. Oh, okay. Hmm. So that's interesting because processing actually uses double ampersand, it looks like, like Java. But then in the documentation, it's using and written out. So I think they're saying it can be both. This is the Python and operator, so um, 
So the key, the key thing here is that it, the description is correct. Compares two expressions. So these are the two expressions, expression 1 and expression 2. Compares them and evaluates the true only if they both are true. And this, is a, this works because we, what we talked about, we want it to be between 0 and 200 x, and at the same time between 0 and 200 for y. So if I click, watch here, I'll click down here, the variables, the, um, the coordinates came out for the print statement, but it did not say test. And similarly, if I click over here, oh, that did say, that does say test. Te um, I've made a mistake. Mouse x. I didn't finish this, sorry. I'm just checking mouse x is between 0 and 200. You would have noticed, maybe you noticed that y was there. That was my mistake. So I'm just right now, I'm just checking if x is between 0 and 200. So I haven't finished this yet. So it only checks to see if we're in this column. And over here, we're not in that column. So I fixed that problem. It doesn't say test. But down here, we're still in the column. So it's still saying yes. It's still saying test, sorry. But let's add the y test. So I'm going to put some brackets around this because that is going to be the first part of our if statement. Hey, is x between 0 and 200? And at the same time, I think you can see what's about to happen here, is y between 0 and 200? So scrolling over here, is mouse y between 0 and 200? Now our test should only come out when we actually click right in the square. Got it? Got it? Got it? Got it? No. Not, not doing anything down here. What about up here? Not doing anything. So only when we go in there. So that's, you know, that's, uh, that's got that figured out. We've got that check. We found out that the user clicked top left. So let's just keep going for a moment. What happens if they click top left? Well, let's just imagine that it's right now it's player one's turn. So if they click top left, what we want to happen is we want the variable top left to change to one. It's player one's turn right now in just this. We're going step by step. So we'll figure out how to deal with players later. And so Hopefully this is going to work. We're going to change that variable. We did it before. You saw me change top left to 1 and stuff happened. It's weird. It's not drawing. What's going on? <laughs> this is this is a mistake I, I'm meaning to make, but uh, unlike the other one. So top left here, I changed it to uh, a 1. Should have got something drawn. Kind of keep it simple. These all have to be. This is this variable up here is a global variable. We really need to talk about functions and get some more ideas going here. But let's just say this. This is a global variable because it's not made inside of a function. Setup is a function. Draw is a function. Anything with def in front of it is a function. We can think of a function as just you know a chunk of code that has a name on it. This lets processing do things like, for instance, it has to run setup once at the beginning and draw repeatedly. Well, how does it know what code it's supposed to run if we didn't have this system to kind of give some code some names? Okay, so that's our first idea of what a function is. And the other idea about a function is that we can have variables that are either outside of a function at the top of our program, which we call global, or inside of the function, which we call local. And right now, Python and processing are, try, are, are thinking that when I did this, that I was trying to do something with a local variable. So I, instead, I'm telling it here, global, hey, no, 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 the variable at the beginning, the top left variable at the top there, that global version, that's the variable I'm trying to change right now. Let's see if that's going to work. I'm going to click up here. Hey, we got an X there that successfully worked. I think that's enough to get you to the point where you can click on the board and fill it up with X's because we're just changing it here 
But what it really means is getting your if statements working. You know what, let's just, before you do that, let's just look at how to make this thing alternate. Let's just say we need another global variable, and it will be whose turn it is, okay? So we're keeping state, and we're keeping state of whose turn it is. We'll deal with making this variable do stuff later, but at the very least, we'll start out by changing it. When we, when we click on it, we'll change it to whoever's turn it is. All I did right now was set turn to 1. So let me change it to 2 and click in top left. And what we would expect to see is a 0 appear there. Okay, so we're going to use this variable. It's going to alternate every time a player plays a, a position. But for now, in your mouse pressed, you can set up these coordinate tests and assign the appropriate variable whatever stored in turn currently and then we can and then you can start getting the game board clicking and you can test it you can change turn between one and two you can click on different squares make sure you do lots of testing we'll stop there